Okay, got a new effect here. It's called Mixadelic. Don't really know how to give you good instruction for it, so experiment. I can show you a few tips and go over some of the details. I've got two clips here because this particular effect can be used as a standalone or to mix two video clips. And throughout the course of this, I will probably make hard cuts into the description of some of these things, so some of these settings might change rapidly. Most of the parameters you're going to want to use are in the top two thirds, and the ones at the bottom third are there for some fine tuning adjustments if you feel adventurous. I will have to go over the gradient because this is fundamentally the basis of this entire effect. The gradient is going to have quite a lot of fine-tuned control for this entire effect. If I add an opacity, you can see how I can change the overall effect just by adding opacities. Uh, this is the default color for this effect, and let me just change this. Uh, one of the important parts of this is being able to affect how the color moves from one patch to another. The default is continuous, linear has a different effect, and constant is really pretty nice. So keep that in mind when you're designing your gradients. You can do the same thing for the opacity side of this. Okay, let's move on down some. These four controls right here, Bad Trip to Mellow, allow you to change the activity of the psychedelic effect. You can blur the edges. Uh, you can add edgy road, which will anti-alias that somewhat. You can change your mask from alpha to luminance or one of these other color channels for different effects. You can change the mask blend mode from add to subtract or replace. And you can change aspects of the gradient, which will be more noticeable in different modes. So that gives you a little bit more control over the effect. And these last two controls here work with the Luma key that underpins this effect and these can be keyframed for a fade in fade out or a fade from one video to the other and the bias is a sort of fine tuner and is based on the shrink expand control so there's no definitive instruction on how to use these. It's basically you need to just move them kind of in tandem with each other to figure out how they're going to interact. Down here at the bottom, the offset. If you pause playback, you have an on-screen control and you can adjust how this appears on the screen. So if you have something that needs to appear at a particular time, you can plan for that. Now I know that the effect moves in the opposite direction of the on-screen control. I really can't do much about that. 